Hello, my name is Kirsten Andrick. I am a PBCA parent, a board member, and a representative of the Parent Comment Committee. Last year, the headmaster and the board sought to bridge a gap between the school administration and the PBCA families. This committee seeks to provide parents with greater communication, such as school's newsletters, and to provide education on topics that are of concern to parents. In each newsletter, you will find a section on something relating to technology to help keep parents in the know. Um, we have information on YouTube, video games, safety concerns. Our goal is to provide resources through this newsletter and then link them to our new website, which is up and running. On March 21st, PBCA hosted an incredible event on the internet and cell phone safety awareness. This event was the result of a survey we sent out a few months ago. Internet and cell phone safety ranked the highest on the list of what parents at PBCA wanted to know more about. So the Hamden County's DA's office, along with a 13-member youth panel, provided those in attendance with invaluable information on how to protect and communicate with our children in this tech-savvy generation. If you miss this event, we'd like to give you a quick summary of the top takeaways. Hello, and that's my job, is to give you the top five takeaways from the internet safety event. So, here we go. Number five is that social media accounts for your children do probably really exist even if they don't have a cell phone, and that is because they sometimes will have a social media account through their friend's cell phone. So you might want to have a conversation with them to find out, does a social media account exist for them that you aren't aware of? Number four, a photo or a post or a video that once that is posted or put out on social media or the internet, it has unlimited reach. It, as soon as you push that post or the send, the control of where it ends up is out of your hands and especially out of your child's hands. It can never be taken down. And even if they think that it's been deleted, it's never truly fully deleted and can show up at any time with anybody. Number three, and that is, is that with those posts and with those pictures that may go on, in some cases there are legal ramifications of how those are handled if it's a if it's a minor child and it ends up somewhere where it shouldn't there can be legal consequences that come toward your child and that when i heard that I, that was was shocking to me because i never thought about the legal side of things so we want to be careful your children want to be careful the things that they're posting your middle school high school children pictures they're posting the number two and this one, we, we struggled with which was number one, which was number two, but we felt like, okay, we'll put this one number two. And that is, is that strive to have open communication with your child, with your middle school student, even with your elementary student. Listen to them. Work together with them to, to come up with an agreement, a social media agreement. Create an atmosphere in your home to where the child in, feels safe telling you anything so that there are no secrets and that there are no situations where you don't know exactly what's going on, but more importantly, that they feel comfortable coming to you as their parent for guidance, for direction, for prayer, any of those things. So create that environment of having that open communication with honesty and with love and knowing that they are secure, they can be secure and safe telling you anything. And the number one uh, takeaway that I know that Kirsten and I even had a discussion afterwards uh, the next day is how thankful we are for Pioneer Valley Christian Academy. There was a youth advisory board of about 13 young people from various high schools in our area. Uh, none of them Christian. But I was appreciative of how open they were and what they shared. But some of the things they shared, uh, things they have dealt with and have seen in their public high schools and public middle schools, I am so thankful that although we're not naive enough to think that our children are immune from it, we have the opportunity to have them in an environment and in a place where they are protected, where they are, that they are taught the word of God to where we deal with situations like that from a biblical perspective and that we have the added layer of being able to guide and direct them through prayer, through, through Christian counseling, through a way to, to hopefully shield them at least somewhat from those type of situations. But even if they find themselves in them, we can always bring them back to the Word of God. So 
I'm so thankful, and I know Kirsten, we've said it, we're so thankful for PV PVCA. So keep your children in Christian education. It's so much more than just math and science. It's integrating the Word of God because if they don't know what they believe and why they believe it before they leave this place, it will soon be stolen. And that is not what any of us I know deep down want to see happen. All, all the resources that were handed out at the evening um, at the event will be available um, in the parent resource section under the parent tab on the new PVCA website. So make sure to take advantage of all those things. And uh, if you have questions, if you have any cons concerns, we are available. Uh, myself, the rest of the administration, um, uh, parents that were there, all of us, we are willing to help. And we just want you to have the tools you need to raise godly young men and women to serve him and to be able to be a light in this world. Thanks for joining us.